Olivia, I have an idea, Oliver said. Okay, what is it? If we are going to be free, we must expose the accusers once and for all. The book must be used. I should go to the library, where I'll send an audio of the book over to national radio. You all must escape. But how? There are so many guards. Oliver grabbed one of his guns and handed it to Olivia. Here, take this. I've never shot a gun before, Oliver. I have. Give me the gun, said Miss Abby. Okay, then. Sneak outside. Be safe. Stay hidden. Only use the gun when you need it. I'll meet you at the west exit of Aldiston. Are we going to be safe, Daddy? asked Lydia. Yes, my girl. You will be kept safe. We will all be safe very soon. Carnegie walked over to his wife, holding her close. He gave her a kiss on her forehead. Keep our daughter safe. Be safe. You better be safe, Oliver. We need you. I need you. Please be safe. Oliver nodded. He realized that he was quiet. Where had the guards gone? Why the sudden silence? Oliver walked towards a window. He looked around. No guards. Why had they left? Oliver tried to figure it out. He decided that it was safe. Whatever had happened, they were now safe to leave. Oliver did worry that they were walking into a trap, but he nonetheless signaled to everyone that it was safe to leave. Olivia held Lydia's hand, keeping her close and quiet. They each went their own way. Miss Abby, Olivia, and Lydia headed towards the closest exit to the city. Oliver went over to the city council building. There he knew that he could broadcast the book to the nation. Only then could he be freed from the grasp of the accusers. But he had to act fast. If he got caught, then would his family have to get back to him? Oliver couldn't think of that. There was no room for failure here. Everything had to be just right. As Oliver headed to the city council building, Olivia and company hid in the shadows of the alleyways. They kept to the corners, out of eye's view. Olivia made sure that Lydia kept as quiet as she could. She kept her close. Miss Abby carefully guarded the group, watching out for any enemies. As they carefully snuck through the city, Miss Abby raised her hand, signaling, signaling for them to stop. What is it, Miss Abby? Olivia whispered. I thought I heard someone, Miss Carnegie, she said. Olivia then listened, trying to figure out what she heard. Nothing. I don't hear anything, Olivia said. Okay, it must be my old ears. Listen carefully for me, okay? If you hear something, tell me. Will do. They then continued their path, more alert than ever. Suddenly, Miss Abby pointed her gun up and shot. A shadow from on top of a nearby building fell down to the floor, right in front of the group. They didn't want to get that close of a look, but they saw the police uniform used by the accusers. Miss Abby's ears were right. There was someone following them. Lydia had covered her ears because of the sound, but she luckily did not cry. Good catch, Miss Abby, said Olivia. Much, appreci much appreciated, Mrs. Carnegie, she said. They then heard a bunch of people running behind them. There had to be many people. Olivia held Lydia's hand tighter. Miss Abby looked to them, eyes focused and certain. Quick, we must go, she said. They then began to run, horrified at the thought that the others would find them after killing their friend. Meanwhile, Oliver was able to sneak into the city council building. The building was vacant. It was dark. Oliver snuck into the radio room, which was used often for city-scale announcements. However, Oliver knew how to tune into a frequency to make a national announcement. Unconventional, but possible. He grabbed a lamp and turned it on. He pulled out the book and turned it to the first page. He grabbed the radio system and the microphone. He turned it on, releasing a bunch of static. He then turned the frequency over, waiting until the static stopped. Eventually, he found the right frequency. He then pressed the record button and prepared himself. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for this brief interruption. My name is Oliver Carnegie, the lost mayor of Altiston. I'm here to deliver an important message regarding my disappearance. If you listen closely, you will understand what has happened. Oliver then turned to the book and began to read the whole thing. He read all the pages for about 30 minutes. It took quite some time. Oliver tried not to pause, worried that if he used up any more time, the accusers would find him. While this was happening, Olivia and company were continuing to escape from their chasers. At some points, they no longer heard them, but then they heard them again. For about 30 minutes, they traveled in the maze of alleyways and other darker areas of the city. 
Eventually, they made it to the fence that had the exit from Altiston. Once they got there, they continued waiting in the dark. Oh, Oliver, Olivia said, where are you? Once Oliver finished the book, he concluded his message on the radio. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, this book exposes the actions of the accusers. Share this message far and wide. Let all know what the accusers have done and what they plan to do. This is Oliver Carnegie, the mayor of Altiston. He then stopped the microphone and watched as a signal was sent out across the nation. The word was sent. The accusers were finally exposed. Oliver put the book in his pocket and figured out a way to sneak out of the building. Once he did, he quickly ran to the exit of the city. Strangely, the entire of Altiston seemed abandoned, like no one was there. Oliver continued to run and find his way to the exit. Once he came to the main road, he went to the barbed fence that surrounded the city. Olivia and company saw him and left their dark space. They hugged and saw the exit. Now all they had to do was leave. Carnegie, came a voice. Olivia looked back. It was the chief of the police. The whole police force followed behind him, guns blazing. Give me the book. We have you surrounded. Either you and your family live and you give me the book, or you and your family dies. The book has already been released to the public, Oliver shouted back. Not yet, Oliver. We intercepted it before it fully left. As long as I live, that message will never get out. Give me the book. Oliver looked at Olivia. What are they going to do now? They were outgunned. They were surrounded. What could they do now? Suddenly a pop went off. It was a gunshot. The chief suddenly collapsed. Behind him stood a police officer. He had been betrayed. Angry, the other police officers aimed their guns at the dissident police officer. The officer ran towards Oliver and his family. Run! Escape! he shouted. They did so, escaping Altison once and for all. Both Oliver and Miss Abby used their guns to shoot off the chasers of the accusers. Despite this, the dissident officer got shot a couple times and Oliver got shot in the leg. However, after enough running, they finally escaped the accusers. They stopped to rest. The dissident officer laid down, blood running down his chest. They went over to him, trying to heal him. Why did you do that? asked Oliver. No conspiracy like the accusers can last forever. Eventually, someone will snap. Evil cannot exist forever. It always leads to disunity. But why you? asked Olivia. May my death reveal the message against the accusers for the whole world. Now, without the chief, all may know the truth of what has happened in Altiston. All may know the goodness of Oliver Carnegie. Farewell, my mayor. I hope I served you well. The dissident officer fell limb dead. Oliver shed a tear, thanking him for his sacrifice. They then began to tend to Oliver's wound. Oliver looked at Lydia as Olivia helped him. I think it's over. Our new life can begin. Are we finally safe, Daddy? Lydia asked, eyes with care and love. Oliver gathered in Olivia, Miss Abby, and Lydia and hugged them all. Yes, we are finally safe.